hello everyone and welcome to another fusing shop video thank you so much for signing up for my to be a member of my patreon page i do plan on posting more videos i've been a little bit behind schedule lately so i apologize for that in this video i have a really cool uh hammer bubbler that we're going to go over how to make and you need a couple things for this you need a bunch of tubing um i have 25 millimeter tubing for the outside i have 12 millimeter for the mouthpiece which we're going to start shaping up now so let's start with that so but pretty much take your 12 millimeter rod and you're going to close down one end pinky out for good measure and right now you can't see but i'm puffing into that just to even out those walls because it did glob up on the end a little bit so just give a couple puff puff puffs and start evening out that glass on the end. The goal that we're going to uh, want to accomplish here is to push a Maria and then make a nice round mouthpiece on the end. So the first thing we're going to do once I get back in here, there we go, is um, punty up to the end of this tube now that we closed it off. I like to use thinner punties because they leave less glass behind. And you don't need uh, this to have tremendous holding power. We are just going to make a cold seal here. Try to get this on center. Because this is going to affect um, how your Maria turns out. So try to get this centered up the best that you can. And just decide how far down along the glass you want to make it. Now the way I make my Maria is I only keep the bottom of the glass in the flame. From this angle it's hard to tell. Actually from any angle it's hard to tell because the, the fire wraps around the glass. So I keep the bottom in and it allows me to see when that little red band forms. And once that red band forms, uh, take out of the flame, smush your hands together, and you should get a nice Maria. And if you rotate it and kept everything on center, your Maria should be all centered up, like you see right here. Now I'm going to crack off that cold seal. And I'm going to get the um, end nice and juicy hot. And you don't want to heat your Maria at this point because you will pretty much undo whatever you just did. So you just want to heat up that glass on the end. And I'm going to puff this out into a nice little bubble. I'm sorry you can't see here. The uh, GoPro angle was not, not enough to get it in there. And also the other camera I put in a different spot. It just didn't work out the way I wanted to. So it's mostly going to be the GoPro angles that we're going to see for this video. Um, so yeah. Uh, here we go. Just got the bubble mine had a little bit of extra glass you want to even out your any you know globs of glass that you have you want to melt that down blow it out melt it down blow it out again to get rid of any of that extra glass or else that is going to show up in your final piece so i'm taking a couple minutes here just to do that before i go and pop the hole open in the end and this is going to be the stem for our bubbler so there you go, you saw the hole just pop. Just hold the very tip of the glass in the flame, just using the paddle, even everything out. And boom, we got a nice little mouthpiece for our bubbler. Now the next part is to make the down stem that we're gonna need. And I think I used nine millimeter tubing for the down stem. This is uh, thin wall tubing. There's a bunch of different you know, ways to make down stems. This is just one of them. Right now I'm measuring how much glass I'm going to need for the size bubbler that I'm going to make. And I just measured off our piece that broke earlier that day. So we just go over how to cut tubing real quick. Just score it away from you. Uh, wet your finger and then just snap it in two and you are good to go. We're going to start with closing down the end of this tubing again. Uh, make, I didn't plug the end. You should plug the end so the flame does not ride up the tubing and burn you. Uh, I went with this little technique that I'm doing here where I'm just using two fingers to kind of roll back and forth. Since this isn't, you know, super thick tubing, it closes down pretty quickly. So just close up that end. Get it nice and round. Blow out any extra glass if you have it. You don't want that extra glass... Um, in the bubble when we blow this out. And we're just going to make a tiny bubble on the end. Just give a couple puff puff puffs and, ro and rotate that glass as you puff and it should give you a nice even bubble. Now what we're going to do, and I hope you have a mini torch because it's pretty 
It's not required for this project, but it is extremely helpful for this type of work. So I'm going to take my mini torch and I'm going to pop three small bubbles in uh, three, three small holes. I'm sorry, not bubbles, three small holes in that bubble that I just made. So I just heat up, use the edge of the flame to pop open. I like to blow the blister first, then use the edge of the flame to pop open the blister and that you get a nice, uh, tiny, precise hole. And just rotate and do it again. I'm going to make three in the uh, down stem here. You don't have to do this. You could just drop a plain tube down and that will work just as well. People like to go crazy with the uh, with the down stems. They like to make like shower down stems. And, you know, um, if you have a uh, ring saw, it's awesome. You could cut slits in there. You could cut slits in any kind of pattern that you want. So that is a cool option uh, for this video. I just assume you did not have that. And uh, we're just going with the popping some holes in the bottom. So there we go. Got our little sprinkler head going. If the camera would focus, that'd be great. There it is. You can see those holes popped in there looking good. Okay. Next step is to um, cold seal punty onto the end of the down stem. And we are going to flare it open a little bit. So when we drop it in the tube, it doesn't fall all the way down in, in the tube. So just punty up. Try to get it as uncentered as possible. And again, here I just made a quick cold seal. And I'm just going to use my reamer and flare open the end. Keep your rotation nice and even to get a nice even flare going. This is a super thin tubing, so it heats up very quickly. You don't need to keep it in the fire that long. And just make whatever size flare. Uh, you want to make your flare a little bit bigger than the bubble you have at the end of your down stem. So this way when we drop this down, it's not going to fall all the way into, uh, into the body of the bubbler. I was going to crack it off there, but I decided just to let it bench cool. I'm also bench cooling the mouthpiece, so those are not in the kiln right now. My blank is a little bit uh, long, which is fine. Uh, this, you know, you want to leave enough glass on so you can make a decent sized body for your bubbler. So I went a little bit overboard and I have a giant piece of glass here. I'm not going to use this whole thing for the body, uh, but I first am going to close down the end. So just put the end of the tubing in the flame, get it nice and red hot. And when it starts to heat up, just touch it around the edges with a rod and twist away and it'll close down that tubing for you. Just a quick, easy way of doing it. And here again, as before, you want to puff out any extra glass or any globs and get rid of those. Make sure you have a nice smooth end to start with. So take your time, make sure everything looks good before you proceed to the next step. You want your piece to look amazing. So take, take the couple extra minutes to uh, do the you know, smoothing out the glass and evening it out. And your final piece will thank you. So while I'm doing that, let's do our dad joke for this video. And it is, what is a computer's favorite food? And the answer is microchips. I guess it could also be megabytes. Maybe that's their favorite uh, meal of the day. <laughs> Grab a bite or two. Anyway, so you can see here I'm still evening out that wall and this you know the top of your piece is where you're going to see it the most so you want to really put put the time in here to work this out and get it uh get it smooth and get it good so i just popped open the hole now and i'm going to go in with the graphite reamer and just open it up we need to open this hole up big enough to drop our down stem in so we want to open it big enough so the the little shower head goes down but the um, part where we flared out does not. So we want that part to be caught by, uh, by that tube. And so that flare is gonna rest on the lip. And you'll see, cause I'm gonna show you how to do it in a minute. But right now, just opening up that tube. Again, uh, keep everything as on center as you can. Cause when you drop your tube, you want it to be centered up and look good. Always want your glass to look good. There's nothing better than like a nice, clear, clean piece of glass. I think it just is awesome. 
So, okay, now we're just, uh, you don't want it. I had a little bit of extra glass here, so I'm just peeling that off my lip. And like I said before, you want to make sure your glass is always even because an uneven lip will make everything, will, you know, you'll see in the final piece. So you want to even it up as much as possible. Giving that a little flatten with the graphite. Looking for where my down stem is. There we go. Cool down so I can pick it up now. Crack off that cold seal. Just give a quick fire polish to the bottom because whenever you take off a cold seal, it does leave a little bit of uh, a scar. So you always want to hit that with a quick fire polish. My hole was not big enough, so back in with the reamer. And you got to open it up until it is the right size. Just slowly rotate that glass and gently push in the reamer. Don't be, don't try to muscle the glass. Be very gentle. Again, had a little bit of extra, so just peel it off with a rod or you could use tweezers, whatever works for you. And then just round it back off. Okay, this is looking good. Looking like the size was perfect for me. There we go. Fits right in. Careful that you don't touch that hot lip. And here's what it looks like. You see that flare is resting right on the rim there. Now what I'm going to do is uh, spot heat one spot so the glass sticks to each other. Or tacked welded as it's also called. So we're just going to tack it on in one place. Make sure you got both pieces nice and hot so it sticks. And then we're going to start rotating. I'm going with an elbows up position here. And I have my reamer to flare open that flare a little bit more so it connects to the rim and all, all the way around. Again, nice view of my hair and my arm in this uh, shot. And now you just rotate it around and uh, make sure you, it makes a, a seamless hot seal. You don't want to, there, you should see no seams when you do this. So rotate it around. It's okay if the glass thickens up a little bit. We're going to push that down in a minute. So in this shot, you can see th those lines have disappeared and the glass is flowing from one piece into the other, which is exactly what you want it to do. You want a nice smooth transition. You should not see any bubbles or lines when you do this. Here I'm just going to square everything up using my Elmarver and a paddle, making sure it's nice and flat on the top because that's where a bowl is going to be and that's where you're going to be looking at. So you want that to look pretty. And now we're getting ready to go ahead and uh, push the bowl. You want to have extra glass on the end because when you push this down, that glass is going to stretch and you want it to be thick enough that it's not going to break. And it's going to be, uh, you know, good to support whatever you're going to be putting in this. So I went in just with the push. You could hold your glass in whichever position you went. I went horizontally and uh, just rotate as you push in with the bowl push. Again, using the elbows down position. Uh, elbows up, I'm sorry. That was elbows up. And now I'm just using my tungsten pick to center up that down stem. So everything looks good. Center it up, rotate back in the flame, check it from all angles, you know, make to, make sure you rotate so you can see if you're centered up in all different uh, dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world, so you really have to check everything. All right, back in, squaring up the end again. And just be gentle. Don't smash this into the graphite. You want to just gently roll it in and gently give it a push. Don't muscle the glass. Again, like I said before. And uh, here's a great use for the mini torch. Is you can really get it right inside that bowl to fire polish out any tool marks. So it's really easy just to fit in there. Uh, only heat up a little bit of glass at a time. When you do this, this way it doesn't start to stretch and deform. And just go ahead and fire polish this out. This makes it looks awesome in the final piece when you take this extra step to go ahead and fire polish it. 
it's just me again something about the clear glass it just looks awesome so take a minute fire polish away get this mini torch if you don't have one any that already this is the smith mini torch i think they're about a hundred bucks or 120 bucks or something like that and they come with a bunch of tips and other stuff but uh they are super helpful for making a pipe like this so really handy and uh yeah definitely get one if you don't have one already now we're gonna pop the hole for the mouthpiece so we're just gonna puff out the blister first just give a little puff 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 and then use the edge of the flame to pop open the hole now you want to measure and make sure that the uh, tubing matches up that hole size matches up with that hole size and you also have to be careful because uh, we just took a giant you know chunk away from that glass so you have to be careful where you put your heat this way you don't start melting it and uh, deforming the top piece that we just worked so hard on getting nice and straight all right everything looks to be a good size now we're just going to get these two juicy hot and when they are both glowing like that orangey kind of glow you're gonna roll them together in the flame and hopefully you got a hot seal on your first shot if so that is amazing if not i will show you how to fix that mine was pretty good there were a couple of places where i had some um scuzz marks so i went in went in with the uh the mini torch to polish that out right now I'm using my thumb to plug my mouthpiece this way I have some air pressure you should always have air pressure when you make attachments it just makes the glass um, easier when you can puff it out and let it fall back and puff it out and now again like I said before I'm using the mini torch just heat up a little bit of glass at a time and go ahead and fire polish where you need to uh, Mark the glass a little bit more. I only had a couple spots that need to be reworked. It's always fun if you get it on the first shot, but it doesn't always happen. So this is this is how you go ahead and repair it. You can also do this with a pinpoint flame on your torch. It's just so much easier with a hand torch. Um, this way you ro could rotate your wrist in any direction you need it to go. You don't have to move the glass so much. So works for me. Again, I am plugging up my mouthpiece hole and blowing, and that is moving those walls out a little bit. This way, you get everything nice and even and a nice smooth joint. You should be able to see through this joint if you made a good hot seal. It should look like, again, one solid piece of glass. It should not look like two pieces of glass welded together. So the glass should flow smoothly from one piece into the other piece. And that is your main goal at this point. And if your piece is going to break, that's going to be the place where it's going to break, where you make that attachment. So you can see, pieces flow together. And that is exactly what you want. It should look, again, like one solid piece of glass. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in a gentle annealing flame. Because, you know, we stress the glass a little bit there. We just want to take some of that stress out. We want to keep the glass happy. We don't want the glass to be stressed out. Nobody likes stress, and uh, the glass will let you know when it's stressed. So be gentle with the glass, keep the glass happy, and you will be good to go. Right now, I'm flame cutting off the bottom. Don't cut too close to your down stem, because we are going to push this down into the graphite to make like a foot. So make sure you give yourself like two inches or so away from that down stem. This way you have ample room to play with in case something goes wrong. And there we go, flame cut. Took off a little bit of extra glass with that. And that is looking good. Now we are pretty much finished with the blow hose. Uh, you can hook the blow hose up to your mouthpiece if you want to um, blow that bubble and make it round on the end. I did not do that in this uh, for this one. I just made my end flat. So we're going to go in with a nice gentle heat. You want a nice bushy flame to do this because you don't want the glass to start moving too crazy on you or to make a huge gather either. So you want a nice gentle flame. 
move that glass around. You want it even, heated evenly on all sides. And, you know, switch hands if you need to, switch um, angles, do whatever you need to do to get all that glass nice and hot. And you want it to gather a little bit, but not a huge gather, just a little bit. So it has a little bit of weight to the bottom. That soot is going to burn off either in the kiln or uh, you could fire polish it off. Just letting you know in case, uh, in case you're worried about the piece. Nothing to worry about. Just give it a gentle push onto the graphite. And I like to just rock it back and forth with my fingers to see if it has a nice, you know, solid feel to it. And heat up, push on the graphite, and that's feeling pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of fire polishing now. I mean, you'll see that soot will disappear. When you turn your oxygen up, it disappears. Now, the last step to do before annealing is to just pop a carb. So I'm going to do that now. Get your bowl push. Uh, you could use your blow hose for this. I just, uh, I did not. It does make it a little bit easier. Um, blow hose is highly recommended for this kind of glass work. Because uh, it just lets you be able to see the glass and where everything is going. Pop that blister, use the edge of the flame, and pop open that hole. Give it a nice fire polish, smooth it out. I'm going to use my tungsten to open it up a little bit more. And that piece is done and ready to go. Go ahead in with the fire polish again. Get a little bit of heat. And that is going in the kiln. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. And I will see you guys in the next one.